When it comes to income planning in retirement, it is really important to understand the four primary taxes that you'll face at the federal level, because if you understand how they work and you navigate them well, you can end up paying less in taxes, and that just means you get to keep more of the money that you've worked hard for. The first kind of tax is ordinary income tax, and that's what most of us are accustomed to because we paid it our entire working lives, but it's associated with things like wage income, earned income, pension income, taxes on certain kinds of income that we receive off of bonds. And in the US here, we have a progressive tax system, which means that we pay less in federal taxes on the first dollar that we earn, we pay more in federal taxes on the last dollar that we earn. And ordinary income is really that first level of taxation, which other taxes are built on top of. The next kind of tax is capital gains taxes, and this is associated with things like stocks and bonds. And you can have short-term capital gains, you can also have long-term capital gains. Short-term capital gains, where you own an investment for less than a year and you sell it and make money, you'll pay taxes at your ordinary income tax rate. But long-term capital gains, if you own that investment for more than a year, can receive preferential tax treatment. You can pay as little as 0% in federal taxes in certain situations. You can also pay as high as 23.8% in long-term capital gains, again, if your income is high enough. The third kind of tax has to do with the Social Security benefits that you receive, whether you receive them at 62, whether you receive them at age 70. Again, based on your income, this uses something called provisional income, which I won't get into here, as little as 0% of the benefits that you receive will be subject to taxation, but as much as 85% of the benefits that you receive will be subject to taxation. Now, it's important to understand that doesn't mean that you pay 85% of your Social Security benefits in taxes. It just means that 85% of the benefits that you receive will be subject to federal taxation. Now, the last tax that you have to navigate, and it's not, it's not called a tax, but it's technically a tax. It has to do with your Medicare Part B premiums. Once you turn 65 and you go on Medicare, Part A is received free, Part B, it starts out at about $150 a month in the year 2021. But if your income is high enough, you will be assessed what's called an IRMA, or an income-related monthly adjustment amount. And that just means that your Medicare Part B premiums will be a lot higher. In some situations, they can double or even triple. And so what you'll see is that all these taxes are really interrelated. And so an additional dollar of income might not just result in you paying more income taxes. It might also increase the amount of your capital gains that are subject to taxation. It might also income increase your Social Security benefits that are subject to tax. It could also increase your Medicare Part B premiums. And so again, these are really interrelated and understanding how they work and how they impact each other is crucial to retirement planning. But it also has implications for those of us who are still working and saving. And ideally, we aren't just saving to one kind of account. We aren't just putting all of our retirement money into a pre-tax account. Maybe we're also saving to a Roth account where that money is tax-free as long as you make qualified withdrawals in retirement. Or maybe we're saving to a brokerage account as well so that when it comes time to do retirement income planning, we have flexibility and we're able to navigate these different kinds of taxes. And so in just a moment, you'll see a link where if you have more questions about this, you can schedule a time to talk with me. Thank you for watching.